Jade Cargill hasn't even been outside the wrestling bubble for a whole summer, and she's already ready to pop it for good. Jade took to Twitter to fire off the following tweet, quote, outside the wrestling bubble is nice. I might stay, end quote. Right on cue, there are now reports that Jade Cargill might never come back to AEW. It's a chance that TBS now stands for That Bitch Split. Can you blame her? I'm not even surprised. This channel has more wrestling content on how these incels abuse black women than all wrestling media combined. And maybe Jade's had enough. If so, I don't blame her. Of course, Jade's comment section was filled with varying versions of entitled fans demanding that she be grateful for the little wrestling company that made her TBS famous. How Jade made TBS more famous by calling it That Bitch Show to the point where Britt Baker is now stealing from Jade by calling it The Brit Show. Who knows, maybe AEW is finally building to a Britt Baker versus Jade Cargill feud one year too late, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Because this is the same wrestling company where its own fans bring signs like this to a half-empty arena. Between AEW struggling to book its top women, let alone the entire division, I don't know if putting up with this rabid, entitled, and overly sensitive fan base is even worth it at this point. If Jade wants to cross over early, she has my support. I've always said that to mainstream audiences, AEW will be remembered as that company where Jade Cargill used to work. The wrestling business is awesome, and for my money, it isn't beneath anybody. But some of its fans and media are, like Wrestling Blotaku. <laughs> Look at this bloated blowhard. His YouTube channel got hit with a copyright strike by Sloth from the Goonies until they realized it wasn't him. More on that later. But for the time being, please donate to his cash app by putting spare change in his back. AEW does have an incel problem. More so than WWE because of how much Tony Khan caters to this audience with his brand of inside baseball and indie style matches that pop the hardcores and makes them feel seen. That's not an entirely bad thing. There are plenty of people who enjoy different styles of wrestling and are better because of it, but unfortunately the AEW supermarks ruin it for everybody. Abusive virgins are to AEW what rats are to New York City. Jade Cargill once quit Twitter over this bullshit, and now she's threatening to quit the entire business because of these masters of the TV dinner diet. Like Wrestling Blotaku, who was the only kid who went to Michael Jackson's house because he heard there would be Neverland Ranch. More on this XXL dork later. Anyway, part of the problem of catering to the bottom of the IWC, whom Ruby calls fat, neck-bearded, mouth-breathing trolls, is that Tony Khan only knows how to do that through spot-filled matches between male indie darlings who all have the same vibe. High star ratings, whatever that means, low mainstream appeal. Forbidden Door, the subreddit Spectacular, had two women's matches in two years. It's basically an all men show, and I'm not here to give you a lecture about diversity and inclusion because this isn't a TED talk, but I do think AEW should book the women better because of the ratings these women can draw. WWE isn't even doing the best job booking women, but women feel like an important part of the show, and it shows through the TV ratings where women have ranked at or near the top of the quarter for the past several weeks. AEW books its women like they're doing them a favor just to have them around. It's no wonder Britt Baker and Taya Valkyrie, who are both talented, had such a sloppy match this week on Dynamite because they've barely gotten any ring time lately. It doesn't matter whether you're a seasoned veteran with sound and ring skills like Mercedes Martinez, remember I said that, or a diamond in the rough with the type of crossover potential AEW desperately needs, like Jade Cargill, women just aren't a priority right now on AEW. Everything from their booking to the way AEW's Twitter troll army goes after them paints women as second-class citizens in Jacksonville. There are about as many women on AEW TV these days as there are in Wrestling Blotaku's DMs. A lot of people think he's some sexless virgin who's never had a girlfriend, but clearly none of them have seen Mike and Molly. His smile makes me think of Double Mint because all I see is gum. Not many people know this, but in 1997, Wrestling Blotaku was charged with armed robbery for stealing 56 rings from Sonic the Hedgehog. Hollywood even made a biopic of his story starring Jim Carrey. No, not that one, though I do understand the confusion. There we go, look at Dr. Robot 2. Wrestling Blotaku is a quintessential example of the fringy misogynist whom AEW needs to distance itself from. Here he is getting cooked in his own comments by women just by mentioning them. My man's getting fried worse than the food that'll kill him in his 30s. 
He reminds me of my favorite TV show from the 90s, Keenan Eight Cal. Now let's get into these blood bars, nigga. My blood type is O positive, his blood type is O zempic, with blood sugar higher than a female would have to be to fuck him. In fact, there is so much sugar in his blood, he'd need two doctors for the transfusion, Ben and Jerry. If insulin was ejaculate, wrestling blotaku would be a cum dumpster. Look at that gremlin grin. It's like if Seabiscuit needed braces. Wrestling blotaku roots for the Ravens, who haven't been to the Super Bowl in over a decade. And here I always thought he was jealous of the Ravens because he wanted to be the biggest loser. Please don't make secondary wrestling promotions your entire personality. Tony Khan will not pay for your sleep apnea machine. I say all this respectfully. Anyway, check out this video about the Nation of Domination reboot and subscribe. Is Jade Cargill gone for good like wrestling blotaku's dating life? Tell me in the comments!